Hi everybody, hope you're having a great Friday. And this is Vaughn, I'm coming to, to you today. It's January 19th, 2024. This is the heart of God for the nation's daily scripture. And we are in an exciting uh, passage today in Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. It says, and it came to pass that at midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead and he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye, ye and the children of Israel and go serve the Lord as you have said. Also take your flocks and your herds as you have said and be gone and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside the children. Some estimate there was 2 million Israelites coming out of Egypt that day. And it says, and a mixed multitude went up also with them and flocks and herds and even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. For it was not leavened because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victual or food. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelled in Egypt was 430 years. Can you imagine that? 430 years being in bondage in Egypt. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day, it came to pass. That's what really stuck out to me, that God has a day planned. Amen. Soon and very soon, he's going to take us out out of Egypt, out of this world, in haste, we're going to be thrust out in the twinkle of an eye. Amen. And it says, even the self same day it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. All the hosts, all the people of, of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. And when the rapture happens, people are gonna remember that day or that night. It could be at midnight, the midnight cry, when that tr last trump shall sound, but people will remember that day for infamy, amen? This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. And our prayer today is, oh, Father God, there is a night coming you have a day prepared. There is a time that has been set aside for you to bring out your people from the land of Egypt. At the midnight, at the midnight hour, the trump shall sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those who remain and are alive shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Egypt or the world will be destroyed. The people will be spoiled. Jesus, your bride shall be arrayed in gold and silver and every precious stone. The rapture of your church will have taken place. The great catching of way, away of your people will have occurred. That self same day will have come to pass. 
There is a night coming soon. There is a day that has been prepared. There is a time that has been set aside for you to bring out your people from the land of Egypt. Amen. It's soon and very soon. We all can see the signs of the times, can't we? Ecclesiastes 3, 1, it says, To everything there is a season and a time, to every purpose under the heaven. In Habakkuk 2, verse 1, it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. So the vision that we're coming to you with, the message is that soon the rapture is going to take place. And it's really going to happen. Amen. Even the Egyptians waited 430 years. But there was a set time. There was the self same day that God did it and took them out of Egypt. Amen. And it says, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And we have faith that Jesus is soon going to appear in the clouds and catch away his bride. Amen. And we all want to be part of that, don't we? And then Second Peter chapter 3, verse 2. It's kind of a long passage, but it's pretty awesome. It says that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostle of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they will willingly, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So the Lord, it's been 6,000 years since Adam and Eve, or six days. It's been 2,000 years since the birth of Jesus, or two days. In the third day, Jesus is going to come and rapture us out. The seventh day, the last thousand years he's going to rule and reign as lord from earth from jerusalem amen while father god rests on that seventh day and it's soon and very soon because we're coming at the end of that two thousand years since christ was born amen it says the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish that's why we've been waiting and God's waiting that there is going to be a day when it happens that he wants us all to be part of that 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 last uh, bus my preacher used to say the first bus I'm sorry the first bus going out of here he wants us all to be there he wants us to be all part of his bride amen it says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God? wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. 
Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, in account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. First Corinthians fifteen fifty one. Behold, I show you a mystery. This was the Apostle Paul telling us about the mystery that the Lord had shown him. We shall not all sleep, but we or die, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. First Thessalonians 4.14 For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus or die in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And he said, wherefore comfort one another with these words. And our last scripture of the day is this, 1 Thessalonians 5, 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. It's not going to come on his children as a thief in the night. We're going to know when it's near, even at the door. Amen. Because we know the signs that Jesus spoke of wars and rumors of wars in earthquakes in diverse places and famines and disease and pestilence. Amen and violence in the land. The days of Noah, there was violence and evil in their hearts continually. And we're seeing that every day, aren't we? Amen. So it's not going to take us as a thief in the night. He said, you are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Are we watching are we watching? It could it could be today. As I'm talking to you right now, Jesus could split that eastern sky. Amen. And he could appear and catch us away. We could hear that last Trump. Is that last Trump sounding right now? Is President Trump, is that a sign? Is his vice president being Pence, his former vice president? Trumpets? Is this the last days? Is God giving us a sign? We don't know, but it could be that the last trump is sounding. Amen. It says, But let us watch and be sober, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober. He keeps saying that, be sober, be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. God's going to save us from the destruction coming upon the earth. Amen. He says, for God is not appointed us to wrath. The seven-year tribulation is God's wrath coming upon the earth. 
Right now we are feeling his judgments. His judgments come with mercy because his judgments awaken us and causes us to turn back to God. But when that rapture happens, his wrath will be poured out. Amen. The first wave, a third of the world will be killed. The next wave, another third of the world will be killed. So that if we roughly have seven, eight million, a billion people in this earth, we're talking about five billion people being killed in a seven year period. Amen. That's God's wrath being poured out. And we don't want to be here, do we? It says, for God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. How? By our Lord Jesus Christ. If we put our hope and trust and faith and make him our Lord and Savior, ask him to forgive us of our sins, amen, and repent, meaning to turn away from our sin, amen, to turn away from the vices to, and the idols and the sin that, that so easily besets us. If we turn away and ask Jesus to be the Lord of our life, to take the steering wheel, amen, then we, we will escape that wrath that's coming and will obtain salvation, right? Because he died for us. He says, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep or die, it means, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. And I hope this was edifying to you today. I hope this encourages you to keep watching and praying and, and let the Holy Spirit consecrate us. Amen. And take those spots and wrinkles out and help us to be that beautiful bride Jesus is coming for. And I hope and pray that, that we'll be ready. Amen. And Lord willing, I'll do this again tomorrow. And God bless. Have a great Friday evening and have a great weekend, okay? We love you all. God bless you. Bye-bye.